All right, what's up, everybody? We are joined today, well, by Jimmy, as per usual. Yeah, I'm always here. And we've got Brady and Trail from Go Hunt, which Go Hunt is a lot of things. It's hard to, like, wrap it up in a bow right away. And so I'm actually not going to do that right now, and I'm going to let these guys do that and kind of introduce themselves and talk a little bit about Go Hunt, and then we're going to dive into... Um, like the services you guys offer, the tools you guys offer, with an emphasis, or maybe we're going to major. This is, a, this is a major in navigating kind of Western tags and the tag application process and the differences, you know, in, in different states and things like that because it's, it's pretty complex. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot to it, but it's not impossible. It can be a little bit intimidating, but uh, that's why we have these guys here. So, uh, Brady? Lay it on us. Man, trying to explain Go Hunt, and I don't even know if you can do it in an hour. But right. we, keep getting, <laughs> we keep adding more and more things right now just to make things easier. I think the biggest thing we do is, you know, obviously encompass the whole Western states application process from over the counter tags to draw tags, every species. But just like breaking that fear of people who are, you know, maybe live in the East Coast and want to hunt out West for the first time. I like guess the biggest thing is just breaking that fear of, okay, what do I need to do and how do I need to get there? Like you can look at a regulations book until you're blue in the face, and it's not really going to tell you a whole lot. No, nope. just going to tell you, okay, these are the dates to apply. This is this, but we like break down everything from what you can encompass in a unit, how you know the draw system works. Is it a draw? Is it over the counter? Like state by state, species by species, just like anything to do with numbers and tags and draw statistics and allocations, like. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's unique too that we're um, you know we're completely web based, so it's a web web based platform. You know, if you sign up, uh, it's a subscription service. Um, once you get access to this insider information, um, I like to tell people it's like this really nice, concise, workable package that's all web based. So, you know, you don't have to thumb through like the pages of a magazine and kind of sort through it. Uh, everything's right there in front of you. It's really user friendly, um, built on a filtering system. So. For example, if you have a state you're interested in, like Colorado, you know, you can pick Colorado, you can pick a species like mule deer, and then you have all these filters built into it to kind of really help you fine tune the types of hunt that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. So if you want to sort by season, say you're a bow hunter and you only want to look at, um, you know, bow hunts in Colorado, uh, you can just hit the season archery. You can sort by things like percentage of public land, uh, which is so important for all of us. You want to come out and, and find a good unit where you have, you know, free access to roam and hunt. Um, harvest success is a huge one. So you can very quickly, you know, scroll over and, and explore all the options by unit um, just that quick, you know, to see which units have the highest harvest success. You can sort by things like trophy potential or buck to doe ratios. I mean, it's just endless the amount of information that you can, you know, very quickly glean and, and put yourself on a hunt. And I mean, Brady's right. It's hard to wrap up like everything that it is that we do. But typically, like what I tell people, the thing that it's done for me. Um, is it's opened my eyes to a whole bunch of opportunities I didn't even know existed. And, you know, I live in this realm. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I'm always research. I was doing this before, you know, go hunt, like trying to do my own research. You cannot possibly get to it all. It's opened up so many opportunities to mm-hmm. me. And like the crazy thing I think about, like when I lived in Montana, I was hunting a certain different area, a certain area. And if I had the tools I had now, I don't know why yeah. I was ever hunting in those certain spots. <laughs> even like your home state, you learn so many different gems of where you could be hunting. And that whole filtering system, like you was saying, like when you take a big map of Colorado, show you all the archery elk areas, and then you start adding the filters, it's just like the map starts showing you less and less information because you're just narrowing down what you want to look for. It eventually, you don't have to research 90, 100 units. You can research 10, 15. And yeah. It saves your time so much. And you can visually see what you're looking at, what you might be specializing in. If your guy likes to glass or a guy likes to, you know, be in Aspens and calling elk, like we have photos of the train in every single unit on the unit profiles. Like it just dives into wow. so much information. Yeah. How do you get all that? Man, it's a, we have a team of people that just go out and dig. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. I got yeah. all our like, engineer people. Like, yeah, people engineers, and, and, and we're just, we're data mining. You're yeah. like the, you're like the, oh, what is it, like Google Street View almost, but for like the wilderness. Yeah, and like the whole like precipitation thing too. Like yeah. you, can, you can track weather patterns, like not just like a weather pattern for like a big city. It's like actual weather pattern in a mountain range that's centrally located. So it's like accurate weather. Like so you can track if you guy who likes horn growth, you can track that throughout the years. You can do the accurate temperature so you can know what to pack in certain seasons. Yeah, we do harvest well, trends, five five years of data. You can look to see if a unit is trending up, trending down, um, you know, number of tags and applicants. Um, 
we're huge on draw odds. We have a complete standalone draw odds page. If you open that up, um, you can pick a state, pick a species. You can look at your odds for every hunt available in that state. Filters built within that, so you can put in the number of points that you might have. And okay. Very quickly filter to only the hunts that you could potentially draw that year and go hunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you um, can adjust that slider to 100%. So I want to yeah. burn my points this year. What can I draw 100%? Yep. And it's going to boom, narrow that down and show what you can draw based and, on all wow. the criteria you entered before. So I like to describe it too. It's like a choose your own ending book. Yeah. You can like yeah. navigate through all, all the data, manipulate all the way to like fit your exact personal criteria. Yeah. Like and if you're this guy who wants to hunt any bull, like you can do adjust the slider all the way down to the lowest trophy potential because you just want to, you just want to see bulls. And then you could sort by bull cow ratio because you just want the higher chance to find a bull. Mm-hmm. And boom, you can do that. And you can even filter by like number of bulls harvested for certain states that show that. So you can find out the best unit that has the most harvest success or most yeah bulls harvested on top of the filter with like a public land percentage it's gonna like wow. give you so many options to look at man that is super cool and the way you describe that as a choose your own adventure i mean a person can person can really it sounds like use all this information that you guys have you know compiled and tailor it to the type of hunt that they're interested yep. in you know a person that n- maybe never elk hunted before and they want to go out west for that you know, that first time, you know, the, the, the trophy potential, like trophy potential is the experience. And I hope I see elk. Exactly. And, and so you can, you know, tailor that hunt to, like you said, like opportunity, like if mm-hmm. there's a lot of elk in this area, but dude, yeah. who cares if it's a big one, that's where I'm going to go, you know? Yeah. And that's the, the other cool thing is we cover, we don't just cover draw hunts. We, we cover all the, all the over the counter stuff too. We even color, uh, cover antlerless odds. So if you want to draw a cow elk tag, you know, we yeah, cover, right we cover that. that. How do you do that? And, and the areas that you can do that in and how to get a tag. And yeah, those opportunities are are the best because you can like you know look at just the over the counter options in a state like Wyoming or not a Wyoming, but uh, like in Colorado or Idaho. I mean, very quickly if you don't have any tags and you want to go hunting, like you can find an opportunity just that quick and go. Man, that's super handy. Yeah. And that's also, I mean, that's super handy for a person who maybe just like whatever something gets canceled or off yeah. the cuff, or you didn't think you're gonna have time to hunt that fall, and all of a sudden you do. You can easily go find that opportunity yep. and say, "Yep, there's an OTC tag here," mm-hmm. and yeah, and like the, buy the, it and go. Yeah, the big perception to me, like I always, you always hear about people saying, like, "Oh, elk hunts in the West, it takes so much points." Like, you know, it's always about points. You can never draw. Mm-hmm. But like we joke around the office, there's almost too much opportunity when you get down to it. Like, you can go hunting every year, multiple states, pick up tags, super easy, or pick up tags that might only take one or two. Yeah. Wants to draw, and you're still having a great time, still hunting every year. Like you're only gonna get older in life. Like why you can't eat points, right? But yeah, you can eat an animal, <laughs> so you might as well go hunting. <laughs> yeah, and that's like a, a good segue into like another part of the the service is we do these application strategy articles. So typically, you know, three to four weeks before an application deadline closes, we're going to do a complete breakdown of the state and species. Um, you know, how to get a tag. We're going to cover over the counter opportunities in that. We're going to give people ideas uh, based on the number of points that they have. Um, you know, we break down populations within that, and, and we just basically cover everything that anybody would ever need to know to apply and, and go hunting or just buy a tag and go hunting. You should tell them how long some of those articles are page-wise. Yeah, page I did. Either. Yeah, so I I did. Uh, I'm trying to think. Of, I probably did, what, four states last year? Yep. And I figured it up one day, and I was like over 200 pages in written text oh. and, and research into those. So these things are pretty geeky. They're, they're giant. And that is nice. robust. Wow. And the yep. great thing about being aligned for those articles like we can create giant graphics like i can just take a bunch of numbers and spit it out in a cool little graphic format to show you exactly what the trends are and easy to look at yeah. format because a lot of people might not want to read but they'll look at those graphics and then they'll be able to pull out a little snippet of information yeah. from a graphic and and we work together to do those brady does like some um, just awesome graphic stuff that it's very easy to process and i'm like i'm like the numbers and the old excel tables and stuff yeah, guy, yeah. But yeah, brady makes them look awesome and and just very easy to glean from I feel like as you get into talking about this stuff, you know, the one thing is for somebody who's not as familiar, that's, that's I think, always been one of the most overwhelming things to me. Well, one, there's a lot of vocabulary that we're, we've even mentioned already, a few things that, that don't make sense, like points mm-hmm. yeah. and, you know, draw odds and just draws in general, um, you know, all that. And then you have, from there, you have your over-the-counters, you have your... Um, lotteries you have your i mean i i can't even remember all of them because mm-hmm. every time i feel like i know all the different ways you can get a tag somebody's like oh well yeah you know you can go to this thing there's a governor's whatever i don't even remember what it's called yeah you know but but what are what are we're not getting those ones by the way Jim. <laughs> well i guess because i'm not a governor i don't know why um but what 
I guess maybe first to go back, I, I said a lot there at once. What are we talking about when we're saying like points, draw odds? How does all that work? What what yeah. are points? So they're they're different for every state, but typically when you're talking about a preference point, um, you're talking about a system where they're going to give the permits to the individuals with the most preference points. Okay. Uh, a bonus point uh, on the flip side typically gives you a better odd of drawing a permit. So for example, like in Utah, um, a bonus point is what you will get if you apply for a limited entry or once in a lifetime species and you're unsuccessful, you're going to get a bonus point for that year. Okay. It's kind of uh, like a participation trophy. Exactly. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's that unsuccessful. <laughs> here's your bonus point. All right. <laughs> um, but what that essentially what it is, is the number of times your application or your name is going to go in the hat for each year that you apply. So if I've got 10 points, I've got, you know, my 10 chances. If you have no, you're going to get one chance, right? Okay. Yeah. So statistically, you know, as you go along, you get better odds with a bonus point. And, and each state does them a little bit different. Like, for example, Nevada, you're going to get a bonus point and they're going to square that. So you're you know, again, you're going to get statistically better odds the more points that you have. Oh, they square that as in like, like if you have two bonus points, yep. it's two squared, three yep. squared. Mm-hmm. Oh yep. wow! Yep, as you go. So they the more just do that just for fun. Just well, to just just to give you an advantage, right? Okay. So it's still a random draw. So oh, like, I see. Because yeah, see, four squared I mean? is way higher yeah, than yeah. three. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Now I guess. So okay. once you draw and start over again, you're kind of mm-hmm. at a disadvantage to draw it again. But at least those right. guys have been waiting so long. Yeah. Have an, yeah, in a sense a little better. Yeah. Yeah, and draw. then some states are com- like Colorado, for example, for elk, uh, deer. You know, it's it's a preference point meaning that the guys with the most points get that tag. So for that state... You get a preference point the same way you get a bonus mm-hmm. point. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Yep. So for that state, you can kind of look at the draw odds and predict a little bit more like, okay, these are my opportunities because I know that the individuals with that number of points are going to get the permits and go hunting. So yeah, there's okay. no, no randomness to that, right? Okay. Um, so that's kind of how that the difference between points work. Some of them have hybrid systems, like, for example, Utah... You know, you've got this bonus point system where uh, 50% of the permits are going to go to the guys with the most bonus points. And okay. then the other 50% are going to be randomly drawn with respect to the number of points you have, giving mm. you a better chance. But still a random draw. But that's kind of like the difference between between the two, you know, preference point and bonus points. And okay. And the other thing, like, I think we talked about it earlier, but every state's different. Yeah. It's just not like any of them. I mean, New Mexico is totally random. Huh. Um, Idaho is completely random. Yep. You know, everybody's on equal playing field. Um, you know, Wyoming has a kind of a hybrid system preference point where they're going to give you know permits to the to the guys with the most points. They have a random aspect with no points. Um, so every state's different, but that's what the great thing about the Insider platform is that you can kind of cruise through these application strategy articles and like start to learn that, yeah. and figure it out. And once you figure it out, it kind of comes, you know. Naturally. Do, do all the different styles kind of have their own unique advantages and disadvantages, or is there one that you look at? Like, I hear Idaho is a really big opportunity state all the time, but you know, and, and is it because of the way they do it, or is it just because of whatever? Yeah, I mean, whatever? E- each state kind of manages, uses a different strategy to manage their wildlife, um, and... Idaho, for whatever reason, they've chosen to, you know, have some random controlled permits that they call them, which are are draw permits. And then they also have these over-the-counter opportunities that you can just simply go buy a tag. And and they kind of, you know, resort them to different zones. Um, Some zones are unlimited in the number of permits. You can just buy one and go hunting. Some are, you know, have controlled and uh, over-the-counter options. So it's just they use different tools to kind of manage their herds, and and each Hmm. state kind of comes at it from a different angle. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, you guys must have to work with like wildlife management and DNR and all that stuff in every state or at least at least yeah. understand everything that they're doing. Yeah. I mean, I, I come from a, so I, Brady and I, both of us actually. Yeah. Brady, both biology yeah. backgrounds. Yeah. Okay. Brady's so degrees in fisheries, mine's in wildlife science. Oh, um, awesome. Yeah. I worked for the, the DWR for nine years as a habitat biologist. And so like a lot of that stuff kind of comes with the territory. You kind of learn the ins and outs of wildlife management and how, you know, how they're doing it. So it's helpful. That's crazy. Yeah. What are the different ways that they they draw tags? Like I was saying, you, there's some where it seems like if you have a bunch of money, you can go. There's some where it seems like if you're really lucky, you can go. There's some where it seems like if you're just not a resident, good luck. You're probably not going to. How's that all work oh, out? Man, probably do, like, you got a state you're interested in? I, I don't know. Well, here's one, for example. Mm-hmm. This is just the first one that popped in my head. You know, people talking about hunting the strip in Arizona. Yeah. They just basically say if you're not a resident, you haven't been applying since you were in the embryo. You know, you're not going to get it. Yeah. Do, yeah. Why is that? Like, what what is it about that that makes it that way? So the strip's a phenomenal hunt. I mean, you know, it's reputation's amazing, yeah, yeah. right? Right. So uh, up till about oh, it's probably been about 
three and a half, four years ago, I guess. Since um, 20, 2016? Yeah, 2016. They actually gave all uh, the permits to the guys with the most points. And what they were finding is that people were just not applying. Because it's like, I don't have 20 years worth of points. I'm just going to bail out. I have no random chance, right? Mm-hmm. And then for the state, they're not making as much money. Yeah, so that they're it. not making oh. the revenue to help manage wildlife and those kinds of things. So what they actually did is they took the non-resident cap, which was 10%, and they split it into 5 and 5. Uh, 5% now going to um, the guys with the most points, 5% now going random so you still have a chance to, mm-hmm. to draw chances are slim if you want to I mean, <laughs> yeah. and you can cruise in and jump in the odds and and see what your chances are but you know there's a chance at, at this point so yeah, yeah that's kind of how they've attacked that and and states do i mean they you know they're malleable they kind of ebb and flow with what makes sense and mm-hmm. i mean i do think that does i mean having some sort of random aspect to, you know mm-hmm. giving a person just a reason to, to be in the right. game and want to be in the game, you know, number one, it provides that opportunity. And like you said, you know, I mean, the States, you know, they need that revenue to manage wildlife, which yeah. is, you know, critically important as well. So, well, yeah. the, the cool thing about that is, is like, if you want to apply for the strip, go for it. If you just want the best of the best, you want to hunt like 190 inch plus buck. And like, that's your ultimate goal in life. Then great. Do that. But if you want to hunt like, you know, coos deer, or you want to hunt maybe a unit that's got slightly better odds, you can play that too, right? So that's why, I mean, information is, there's never been a time where information was more available. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, I encourage them, use it. There's so much good information out there, like that insider account and odds and all those strategy articles, like jump in and, you know, get your feet wet and and really find those opportunities and Mm -hmm. kind of fine tune it to what you're looking for. I mean, you're hundred. I mean, with what you guys have done, and just like you said, the information that's mm-hmm. out there. I mean, this used to be. I mean, and, and it's still complex, right? Mm-hmm. But I think it was an, an, an even bigger mystery, you know. And with with the tools that like you guys offer, I mean, that veil has been lifted. And if a person wants to take the time, which is actually probably a lot less time than yeah. they oh, would yeah. have had oh, to so before. Much less time. Um, Let me guarantee you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, because you guys yeah. have put in the time, uh, but. Um, like you said, there's just so much out there, and if a person wants to, they can they can find it. This is one thing we haven't talked about enough. I mean, I feel like we've talked about the mapping software nowadays, modern mapping software, and that making yeah. just finding places to go. Mm-hmm. If you're just kind of like a, I call it the on on accident, you right. know, finding stuff. If you're just going out there, you can find that. But then you also have this, just like you said, just this wealth of knowledge at your fingertips when you go on here, as far as just even finding what what you're going to be hunting before you actually go out there. Yep. And that's yeah, that's pretty wild. And you can cater it to, like we said earlier, anything you want. Like, just want to have harvest success. You just want to find the biggest bulls. Like, there's states out there for everyone to apply in. Mm-hmm. And with any points, and just, like, breaking the boundaries of, okay, what do I need to do to apply here? When, so- sure. when someone asks you, and, you know, I feel like the answer so often is it depends, but but let's just say for a moment that you were going to, like, give somebody, you know, just a straight-up answer. I, you know, I was going to go up to you and be like, okay, I want – like the quintessential, maybe somewhat stereotypical Western hunting experience, but I have no idea what should I go for elk, should I go for mule deer, should I go for coos deer, whatever. And, and like, I don't know what state I should go, how I should draw the tag, maybe if I should apply and try and get one later. If, if somebody just come up to you from scratch and they're going to say, what would you recommend that I go for if I really want that experience? Well, what would it be? Yeah, I, I usually start with saying, like, well, what are your objectives for the hunt? Like, are yeah. you are you looking for, like, an experience to just, you know, experience a hunt? Uh, you know, what kind of, or what are you interested in species-wise? You know, what's kind of your level of fitness? Do you want, like, a backpack hunt? Do you want a more, like, a day hunt? You know, are you a bow hunter or a rifle hunter? But, like, for me, um, yeah, Western big game hunting, I think mule deer is an awesome place to start. Uh, and if you're talking mule deer, you're probably talking Colorado. Okay. And and there's a ton of opportunity in Colorado. Uh, a lot of people think like, oh, it's really tough to get a tag there. And there's some phenomenal hunting with, you know, zero points, one point, two point, um, with a rifle, you know, during late October, early November, you know, right on the cusp of that rut. You can day hunt that. You can backpack it. There's tons of public land. That's typically like one I go for. The other one that like kind of always gets brushed over uh, is just like an antelope hunt. Like right, if, yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and if you want to go out, I mean, I took my 13-year-old kid this year. It was his first hunt ever. We went to Wyoming. We drew a permit as a second choice. Um, you know, went up and, and just day hunted. We stayed in a crappy hotel in Casper. We watched playoff baseball and ate junk food and just had an absolute riot. That's you know, great. Did some hiking. We killed two really nice bucks. And, you know, he had a great first hunt. It's game rich. The, the hiking's not going to kill you. 
you know, you can you can go out and do that on your own it's and not like, get it. It's kind of like nature's arcade out there, too. Oh, man, it's the best. You, you blow one stock, you look over, yeah. oh, there's more oh, antelope there's over here. It's like <laughs> one of the most hidden gem things to do. Yeah. yeah. You can do it with a family, too, like you just yeah. said. Like, it's easy to go out and do. So those are probably the first two. Uh, once you get into elk hunting, um, you know, there's some considerations to, that you're going to have to take. I mean, as far as breaking those animals down and getting them off yeah. the mountain because – it's a lot of fun up until the point like where you get them down and once you have a bull elk down you're like okay now this has changed this is now a lot what? of work there's yeah. there's some extra there's an extra layer of logistics for in there sure. for oh, sure yeah. yep you know going back to that antelope thing though you, you know you talk about your objectives with a hunt too and like you know a person might have you know the personality that they want to do that hardcore backpack you know yep. diy let's go deep but then also like we're also out there to have fun and not that an antelope isn't hard or can't be hard, but um, like you said, it's a game-rich area. There's a lot, of, a lot of opportunity if you're going out with, like, a group of guys and you want to have an awesome camp atmosphere. And like yeah. you said, multiple stocks. I mean, I'm not going to say you're going to get one, but the odds are high. Mm -hmm. um, that's just like I, – I look at it – it's almost like the – the waterfowling of big game hunting. Yep. <laughs> and it's, yeah. And it's crazy too. When people talk about their home state has antelope. Like I talked to a lot of guys from Oregon who are like, Oh, I just want to hunt antelope, but I can never draw. And they have like 16 points in their home state. And they're like, I can never hunt antelope. I was want to hunt antelope. I'm like we can show you how to draw an antelope tag in yeah. one to two, three years in Wyoming. Well, yeah. and then trails mm. just talking about a drawing on a second choice, yep. a second choice, which yeah, maybe explain, over. you know, yeah. that okay, draw, yeah, the drawing that? of that tag. And yeah. So Wyoming is going to uh, take into consideration your first choice, everybody's first choice, um, and then they'll take into consideration people's second choices after the fact. So um, if you draw a permit as a second choice, essentially there were more permits than there were people that had that hunt for a first choice. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and what you're going to do actually in that situation is you're actually going to get a point for that year, and you're actually going to get the permit that you drew as a second choice and you go hunting. Uh, and you'll retain any points that you had built up to that point. So for like my boy and I, what I'm doing is we're we're building points, we're drawing permits as second choices, and eventually, maybe here in two or three years, we'll go and hunt a better unit mm, okay. where the, where the trophy potential is a little bit better. Maybe there's a little bit more public land. You know, we can lo look over more antelope. But I mean, it's a it's an awesome opportunity. Yeah, it's I, I would challenge anybody. To, to tell me that you didn't have fun when you went on an antelope hunt. It's the best. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. How about for you? What would you say for somebody in a similar situation? Would you echo what he said, or do you have a little bit different preferences yourself? Or I mean, I'll, I'll definitely echo the same thing because I'm a big mule there guy myself. But, like, I lean towards, like, maybe sending people to, you know, states like Montana or even Idaho because, like, Montana has such a long season. Like, for a guy who wants to, you, you know, you could, yeah, do the whole, like, archery elk hunt. And you can have you can do the, like the big game combo tag where you get an elk tag and a deer tag in the same one, so you can hunt oh, really? archery elk and mule there at the same time. So maybe you could do it where if you can make two trips, you could hunt archery elk in September, and then you could turn around and then because Montana is like a, a six week archery, five week rifle season, then you can turn around and hunt mule deer bucks in the rut in late November, which you can't really do anywhere else. So these bucks are just rutted up. You see a lot of game game rich environment. Not the biggest deer in the West by any means, but you're hunting lots and lots of mule deer in the late season so and, and if you're with you, the rifle if you get that so if you get that combo you can do the bow and the rifle so yep. it's so you can, not you can, just for bow and it's not just exactly. for rifle yep so during the archery oh, season you have to use cool. a bow and then once rifle season comes you could still bow hunt a okay, mule deer during yeah. the rut but you have to wear orange but then you have a rifle and you can then hunt elk with yeah. the rifle too so you didn't take oh, out and you can come back to it so it's like a great opportunity for people to go i mean it's a little more expensive tag obviously because you have two tags on one but yeah you're hunting 11 weeks out of the year in yeah. a way like you can make two vacation trips out there and that's probably a dumb question but mark like when we're in wisconsin if you buy a deer tag for but like archery season does that carry over into rifle season or does that it it doesn't the way the way ours are structured if you want you can buy an archery buck tag and, right. a, and a rifle buck tag and you you know you have to hunt them during their respective season if you don't harvest a buck during the rifle you can use it during the muzzleloader season that so follows that right after over. okay like a firearm tag mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then and then the archery tag i mean don't quote me but i believe it runs congruently through all of that so if a person just had an archery tag yeah they could 
you know, yeah. hunt, you know, they'd like you said, they'd have to wear orange during the during yeah. the gun season. But okay. yeah, in the West, you've got Wyoming, which will provide that. So if you draw a Type One, a Type Two tag, um, most of those will allow you to archery hunt if you just purchase an archery stamp, which is seventy three bucks for non resident. You can hunt both the archery hunt, and then if you don't harvest, you can actually come back and hunt during the rifle hunt, and that's similar to Montana on their their general combo tags. You can archery and rifle hunt, which is just awesome. That is really awesome. Yeah, yeah. I did that this year in Wyoming. Didn't Got to yeah. full draw three times on bulls in the archery hunt, and then came back in the rifle hunt and killed my bull. It was like mm-hmm. a great opportunity. Yeah, that's super cool. Now, with that, I'm trying to maybe even just mention that, but I think, do you have to buy an additional archery stamp to, like, validate that art? Like, you get the, you get the elk tag. Yep, yep. Same thing with Montana. You have to buy an archery license. And Wyoming gets a stamp. Okay. Yep. Okay. Ten bucks in uh, Montana for a non-resident and 73 for a non-resident in Wyoming. Okay. Yep. We were talking about units, too. So this is another thing that's always kind of baffled me is, is there's so many units out west. And you alluded to it a little bit, I think, earlier, you know, but some people look at, at – certain units like oh man and they just they just it's funny when i listen to people talk about it because they're like oh yeah unit like 73 see it's like listening to bingo yeah. you know and i'm like <laughs> and then a bunch of other people are like oh man or like ooh, you know and I'm, yeah i there's so many how do people like some of these units just get this reputation for just this like it they they're like yeah. super amazing uh, and some are just kind of like yeah, yeah whatever so the states manage those units for different opportunities um you know, for example, in Utah, we name our, our units are named. They're also numbered. Uh, most people refer to them by name. Uh, but like for elk, for example, they manage those units for different age class objectives for the bulls that are harvested. Mm-hmm. Um, so like if you jump in your insider account, you can very quickly see like which ones are the top of the heap by just sliding that trophy potential bar over. And you'll start to see like which units are managed for that seven and a half to eight and a half year old bull. Same thing for Arizona. I mean, Arizona's are numbered, uh, but you can use that trophy slider and even the draw odds are going to tell you like which units here are the real premium hunts, right? Very quickly yeah. you can see that just by looking at the odds because those are the ones with like 0.05% odds, right? Right. Um, but, yeah, they manage those for, for different experience. And that's the great thing is that most state agencies give people the opportunity to do both. If you want to, like, swing for the fences and, like, maybe never draw, go for it. But if you want to go hunting, here's an opportunity, right? Mm, okay. and, and, and you can kind of use your insider account to explore that. Um a classic example, I'll just touch on that, but like Arizona, everybody thinks Arizona elk, right? That's so far out there. Yeah. Like I'll never draw an Arizona elk tag, right? Man, you jump in the draw odds and you start looking at the hunts that they offer, you know, early archery, um, you know, early rifle, obviously tough to draw. But you start looking at like maybe some of the late archery hunts, that's November spot in the stock, it's a tough hunt, I'm not going to lie, but you get a chance to hunt some of the best units in the Arizona with maybe three or four points versus 20. Yeah, right. Um, you know, so those those are the opportunities that exist. You just got to find the information and kind of play, you know, play the odds. I'm I'm always an odds guy. I'm like, if I, you know, I get to hunt an area, you know, every other year for 10 years, I stand a pretty good chance of killing a nice bull. Because you, you can learn a lot. Because I learn a lot. Mm-hmm. If I hunt that one time in 20 years, my chances are I'm probably going to kill a bull. It's probably going to be just like an average bull because I've only <laughs> hunted one time in 20 years, right? <laughs> I don't know how to do it. Yeah, that's the thing I always tell people too. Like you yeah. have this big special elk tag, but you've never gone elk hunting in between. You've never tried to fill that hunt with like over-the-counter elk hunt. You don't know yeah. what the animals do or have a big mule deer tag. You don't know how to hunt mule deer. And you draw that. Is that going to be a really good hunt for you? Because yep. mm-hmm. you don't have any of those tactics figured out yet. So it's like, that's why it's good to supplement all your hunts with like over the counter stuff or easy to draw stuff as you wait for one of these once in a lifetime tags. Yeah. yeah. I don't even know if I answered your question. I took that and just ran. <laughs> no, I think I think you did. If you didn't answer that question, you answered like three others. Sure. Um, but it, it kind of goes, it reminds me back to as well. When we were talking a little bit about like, we were talking about in a previous podcast, kind of the big buck fever and stuff like that. You know, I just remember thinking like at this point in my hunting life, I look at it and I'm just like, I just want to go hunting, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. But I could see where eventually after somebody does that after a while, they're kind of like, okay, you know, I want to go after a more mature animal, something that's a little bit craftier, something that may, maybe will be more apt to outsmart me. He's been around the block. Yeah. And you, know, you can find that. Um, but, yeah. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the progression of most hunters. You know, they start out with opportunity and they're just looking to fill their tag. And, you know, after you get to know an area and you see what the potential of an area might be, you get to be a little bit more selective and then maybe start scouting and spend some time and really target an animal and, and go after it and kind of up your up your ante. 
But yeah, and that's the great thing about opportunity types of units is that you can get to know those units. Mm-hmm. You can hunt them often, you know. Mm-hmm. And the more often you hunt an area, the better the opportunity to kill a a, a nice animal. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah, Mark, you're you, you like grew up out west. I feel like where did you get? Where are you guys from out west? Both I, you guys? I grew up in southern Utah. Yeah, you did. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I grew up in the Midwest and then moved to Montana at an early age, and Montana was okay. Like gotcha. Home, yeah, because I was trying to think like you know. I grew up in the Midwest and I've, you know, hasn't been hunting nearly as long as, you know, guys like Mark and probably you guys as well. You know, I'm trying to think like, even now I'm getting to the point where I look at a Western hunt and I'm less intimidated. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think back too to some of those things where it was like, when I just looked at that, it was like back, back in the day, it was kind of like only like freak mountain men, <laughs> yeah. crazy go people hunting. go on those kind of hunts, yeah. you know, like yeah. you can't, you can't do that as a regular guy. I tell people all the time, it's so much more doable than you think. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. and the tools have never been uh, easier to find. And and those opportunities have never been easier to find. All you really need to do is do the work, do some research, and bite the bullet and go for it. Yeah. And and it's there. Yeah. No reason to stay home. I I tell people that all the time. There's no reason. If you want to go elk hunting every year... You have no reason not to. Mm -hmm. No sense in waiting because you're going to get hooked and you don't want to be out west every September. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Well, you said there's just, there's so many like units where you you don't need a ton of points. You might need some. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot where you don't need any. And to your point, no pun intended, but you can still build and bank points for maybe some of those, you know, quotation mark premium units, but you still get to go hunt every year. Yep. Yeah, and you're better off for it because then you've you've got a skill set to match the potential of the tag that you might eventually draw. Yeah, yeah. you know, and, and I'm I'm banking points in a few units, and honestly, there are so many of these great opportunities out there that I know I can just plan on and build my schedule around. Yeah, that I kind of just I it's almost like I don't even think about those points. I'm like, well, I want to go do this, and I know I can do this this year, and you know, you plan your hunt schedule or whatever and then all of a sudden I keep building all these points that I just I never use and then and then I've built these points now I'm nervous to use them like I'll just oh, go to an over counter over the counter <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a lot of pressure when you, you draw some of those tags points trigger yeah. shy yeah I uh I, one thing as you were talking you're going to be going on a hunt this year Mark that I found really interesting because the other the other thing that's weird about I guess weird to just somebody who's not as familiar with it about these kinds of hunts is like the application times you know like mm-hmm. you have to apply way in advance many times mark you applied for a hunt that you're going to go on like a over a year ago and you drew it last how did that work it, it's, it's kind of crazy how it all ended up so yeah so th- that's uh i drew a um a prince of wales island black mm-hmm. bear tag yep. which i think i probably drew about this exact time last year mm-hmm. but i still haven't gone because of their draw timing structure yeah. and then their season structure the way that li- the way that lines up so I'll actually be doing that how this long ago, coming May. How long ago did you actually put in then for that application? Cuz if you if you drew it about a, one year ago you had to have applied for it even like f- December. Okay. Draw results came out for Alaska today. So Uh-oh. for for, for oh, this yeah, so for, for this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So wow. for this year. So yeah. I don't know. To even think to that. check my email. Yeah, you have to check your email. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may be going honey. <laughs> We see you screaming down the hallway, just up oh, and yeah. you know, oh, whooping yeah. and hollering. We'll know you did well. Yeah, yeah, Jim, you might you might be see, seeing me do an extra hotel workout tonight, <laughs> trying try oh. to up that game. Oh, but, yeah. So yeah, I'll I drew see that you in those stairwell. I drew that. T- yeah, two two or I put in two December's ago, and like you said, and then you just you find out today. But for that hunt, since it's a spring hunt, you kind of yeah. it's a little extra. That'll be a fun hunt. Time. Yeah, I've I'm, heard I'm, great things. I'm super stoked. Yeah, about I've never it, done so. it, but it sounds awesome. It's a big deal when they have those when they have those announcements of. You know the uh, oh yeah the outcomes of the draw. I mean that's that's yeah that's you, huge. You brought up applications. I mean right now is application season. Uh, really like January one to you know May June is, is the time frame, and the states kind of stagger them. Mm-hmm. Um, you know v- we've already missed the deadline uh, January thirty first for uh, Wyoming elk. Uh, you'll have the deer and the antelope draw uh, later on in the year, but they kind of stagger them. But yeah, from really January to, to about May, June is, is the time frame that you really want to start paying attention and, and making sure you get your applications in. Mm-hmm. And do, do them ahead of time, too. Do ahead of time, yeah. It's like Arizona just recently, oh, they had a big system crash in their website, so everyone's trying to apply on the last day yep. Yep. and oh, not have man. it. And they usually don't extend it, but Arizona extended it till the next day. So it's like... Yeah. These things are very valuable. <laughs> I took That's so not many. a really uncommon thing no. to happen. Mm-hmm. I mean... They'll yeah. have system crashes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, the government shuts down all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, but that, and that's, that's one thing I've always found curious, too. Like, you take a state like 
you know, Wyoming or, and they're not unique in this, but intuitively I'd think like, oh, I have to remember one date. Like if I want to put in for Wyoming, it's by X date, but you know, mm-hmm. the elk is at this time, even just within that state. And then, you know, the deer draw might be a little bit later or at least the, you know, the application period. And, um, and that's another complexity. Well, it's an, a, a great thing about being an insider and having an account. You've got a, a hunter dashboard there. You land on that, and we have a calendar there for you. And we're going to send you also send you an email reminder. Hey, you got a week to apply or a day to apply. Um, but yeah, very quickly you can log into your account, scroll down on the bottom right corner, and just see all the upcoming deadlines and make sure that you hit them. Yeah, just simplifies it for you. Yeah, you guys are like the ultimate hunter's assistant because yeah, yeah. I mean, otherwise, I mean, you got people like I mean, Mark and I, Mark. I mean, you've gone on some of these hunts before, so clearly you've had the wherewithal to think ahead enough. But I, I barely, I don't even know what I'm going to eat for lunch, and it's already <laughs> past noon. You know, like I can't think ahead hardly. But yeah, you really that is the, that is the one thing about Western hunting. Although, so to do an over the counter hunt, that doesn't need to happen in advance, though, right? So I was going to say you really have to think ahead a lot, and you, you mm-hmm. have to think ahead for your logistics and travel and, and gear and all that. But for an over-the-counter tag, you that doesn't necessarily have to be way in advance. No, not necessarily. Um, like Idaho, for example, they've got some unlimited zones, so you can always buy a tag there. They do have a couple that are have a limited quota. They're still over-the-counter, but they will sell out quicker. We'll let you know about that also. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Idaho is unique. They have an early um, start date for buying tags. It's that first part of December, actually. So you got to buy them a whole year in advance. Um, but, yeah, I mean, we, we try to take – I mean, I tell people all the time, like, this is the world we live in. This is, like, what I do every day. I mean, some people are an accountant or a mechanic or whatever it is that they do, but, like, this is our realm, right? We mm-hmm. deal with this type of stuff. So – yeah, we try to give people all the tools uh, so they can put those in their toolbox and, and get them out and go on a hunt. Those unlimited tags are pretty are pretty trick. I don't know what the one in Idaho is like. Dave, my brother Dave, was, went on the one in some Montana. Sheep. So that's that's a uni- that's a sheep. Unique yeah, hunt. maybe Brady Brady could probably touch on it a little bit. Ooh, unlimited sheep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. You it's gotta a, like it's an itch we all want to scratch yeah, eventually. Anybody can go unlimited tags, but there's a, well, there's only a certain amount that could be harvested. You yeah, gotta like they based on a quota. Yeah, so once the quota's yeah. met, they will close it. Yeah, and it still cost you the non-resident price, which a lot of people steep. But you could go there multiple years, maybe ten years, and start learning it and learning it, and eventually kill a ram, which is a very unique opportunity. Only. The only Stick. opportunity like that. Only if you want to hunt sheep, most of us, that'd probably be the only chance we might ever get. So, yeah, if, yeah it's a cool opportunity. And yeah. we know we know people that have done it. I mean, every year we'll we'll, know, we'll meet somebody that's done it. So yeah. it's like the ultimate dream. It's, it's a pretty tough place to get into. Sure. Running into grizzly bears, not seeing a lot of other animals, but you yeah. have a chance for a ram and you have a rifle in your hand, or you could do it with a bow, but I don't know mm. a lot of people. Yeah. It's it's rare. Such, yeah. So you see a ram, you're... As long as it's legal, you're going to yeah. go for it. Yeah. From, from what I've heard, that one's not for the faint of heart. No. And no. so if, if you're listening out there and you are planning your first Western hunt. That's probably not one. Probably not. Probably not. One. Yeah. No, no. Probably not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've been hunting for uh, my whole life. That's not one I've tackled yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At some point. I've heard I would it love is like to. The, the toughest hunt in North America. Yeah. Like, yeah. The Oof. physicality of it. Even that's intriguing, though. <laughs> you got you to gotta call in like every night, yep. too, when Make you're sure. out there. They gotta so they know you're out there and know what you've uh, what you've done. It's pretty wild. Yeah, when Dave did that, he was he was mm-hmm. pack training with a hundred pounds, mm-hmm. uh, like every day, four miles in an hour. Yeah, he was he was rocking it. Yeah, he's yeah those guys. He's I adopted. Remember, I can't remember <laughs> how many. Just kidding. He's um, <laughs> yeah, man, those guys covered some miles. Yeah, like uh, yeah, serious. I think really they did. He corrected me the other day because I remember I said they did almost seventy miles, and he was like, "Jim, I think we only did about sixty. And I was like, "Oh, sorry." <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, no, it sounds awesome. We've talked to guys that have done it year in and year out that live up there in Montana, and it just sounds like an incredible experience, but tough hunt. What? I mean, it is pretty wild. To, I mean, it's even hard to fathom if a person, you know, was physically fit enough to tackle that hunt and take it on. Like you said, you'd be like, yeah, I've hunted sheep 10 years in a row. You, may not, you, <laughs> didn't, you didn't kill one 10 years in a row, yep. but yeah. not many people can say they hunted sheep 10 years exactly. in a row. I have a sheep tag in your pocket. Yeah, I'll we'll dream about them. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any states out west that you would say don't get as much of a limelight as they as they should? Like oh. uh, you hear a lot of time you hear Utah, Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, um, Arizona. Yeah, I could touch on mine. Maybe Brady would take a stab, but for me, uh, New Mexico, I think is. I mean, it's a random draw. 
and you get three choices. So, and they're going to take all three of your choices into consideration before moving to the next applicant. So you could actually draw, you know, your first, second, or third choice. It's cool about that is you can kind of stagger them, maybe take a swing for the fences approach with your first choice, kind of stagger it towards maybe a decent hunt with better odds as your third choice. You never know when you're going to draw, and it's relatively inexpensive to apply. I mean, this year they're going to make you buy a hunting license, which is $65. Bucks. Um, hmm. Last year they would refund that if you didn't draw. But this year, $65 bucks plus $13 bucks per species. And, I mean, some of the finest elk hunting, just absolute phenomenal dates, rut dates, you know, the 15th through the 24th for that second archery tag. And I've had some just awesome, fun hunts down there. So for me, uh, I always tell people, like, if you're not applying for New Mexico elk, you're missing out. Like, yeah. it's good. Yeah. Maybe Brady. I don't know. You got a state that you think flies under yeah, the radar? Re- so, yeah. Yeah. Why don't you reveal your sleeper states? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now you. I feel, the, <laughs> I feel the nervous anxiety coming over from Mark. Is we- yeah. I mean, to me, I think still, like, everyone thinks of Montana as, like, an elk state, but yeah, like the amount of opportunity there is in Montana for deer is just overwhelming. And if you're a guy who just wants to hunt a different, you hunt a whitetail the whole time, you just want to try something new. Like I think a Montana mule deer hunt with during the rut in November, like I don't think that hunt can be beat. Yeah. Like the amount of deer we see in a day, like I've no joke. We see 38 to 45 bucks a day <sighs> and this is all public land and you're just running around, you know, a lot of times you could backpack it if you want to, but it's really cold. So, you know, you're staying in a hotel, you're, you know, eating good food. Like it's an enjoyable hunt. I do that every year with my family, take them up there. We all normally draw tags, but tags are getting harder to draw in Montana, maybe because I say Montana all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but like, well, that just means you're opening up another spot. Yeah. I mean, that's just the, the funnest hunt to me, I think is hunting mule deer in the rut and that's it. And it's just something I don't think it's an expensive tag. And yeah, but when you get over that, you're seeing so many animals and it's such a fun, fun hunt. That's cool. Great, Brady. I was going to hunt just elk in Montana. And now I might have to buy that stupid yeah, I, combo tag. I yeah. get yeah. the combo yeah. tag. Darn it. What about on the other end of the spectrum? What's like on your guys' Go Hunt app, like the number one, probably hardest tag that anybody would ever have the, the app so chance the, to? The draw? one, yeah, the one for me every year that like it's a hard. It's hard to stomach when I apply is probably Nevada. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Nevada has some phenomenal hunting, especially for elk, and they've got some great mule deer. Uh, it is very tough to draw a tag in Nevada. Um, the good thing is, you know, you can apply for all the species you're interested in, but it's it's pretty expensive to apply. You have to buy a $155 hunting license uh, in order to apply. Um and the odds of drawing are slim to none. It's mm. like it's it's like buying a raffle ticket. Yeah. So for me, that's a hard one for me to stomach. Uh, in saying that, I will say there are some hunts like an archery antelope hunt or maybe some archery deer hunts that are a little bit easier to draw, which is what I keep telling my wife. Hey, eventually, like here, four or five years, I can draw a tag and go hunt Nevada. It'll be okay. You know, I'm not just wasting money here. So, but, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for me, it's probably Nevada is the one every year. I'm like, eh, should I? Yeah. That's yeah. what I think is great, though, about people trying to set up their five, 10 year hunting plans. Yeah. You can always use those states as like, okay, these are my dream states. I might, yep. might be a little more expensive to draw or to apply for, but eventually, you know, you know, you might be able to draw one of them. Maybe yeah. that, maybe that's why I didn't end up with a, a couple girls over the year because when they asked me what my ten year plan was, I I told them you just start listing off your strategy. Hunting. Is yeah. that my, yeah, <laughs> my hunting? So like yeah, mule deer in this day. <laughs> no, <laughs> was yeah. that a turn off? <laughs> um, gosh, I mean you guys. So we've talked a little bit actually, and this is something like if you're just getting into it, you know, a person may want to know, or it's probably good to know, is like you know the cost, you know, which could be like, you know, a barrier to entry or something to consider. Like you say, in in X state, you have to buy the hunting license um, and you keep that regardless if you go hunt that state or not. And that's kind of your, your gateway into being able to apply for that state. I know for myself this year, you know, sometimes you get the, some of that money yep. back. You have to mm-hmm. front it, you know, on in the beginning, um, in case in point, uh, I, I drew a Colorado uh, 
rifle tag mm-hmm. this year. And then, then uh, when it hit the card, my wife called me and she's like, hey, what's this? And I said, oh, I, um, it's for a Colorado deer tag. And she says, well, is this, is this the kind where we get the money back? And I said, oh, no, we own this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind where we go hunting. Yeah. That's yeah. a great thing, too. Like in on Insider, we break apart all that in an app strategy articles. And then also we have something called what state profiles. We break apart all your cost. Oh, how no much way. you're going to get yeah, back. super nice. And then each year we do do an article about like what's it cost to apply in the West. So basically, to break down every single state, the species, your bonus point fee, your you know your hunting license fee, and break it apart. Then we have a big table at the bottom that says, okay, if you wanted to apply in X amount of states, this is what's going to cost you. And so you can kind of like bank on that. Like this is the stuff you're going to be refunded. This is stuff that you're not you're going to lose every single year just to apply. It kind of gives people a big picture, you know, what they can afford. If you have like you know a thousand dollars to spend on apps everywhere, this is where you could you know best spend your money maybe to hunt more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most states are charging you a hunting license now at mm-hmm. this point. Um, you know, Utah, Arizona, uh, New Mexico, uh, Nevada, Idaho. Um, you, it's kind of getting to be the norm where you have to buy a hunting license in order to apply. Yeah. And it's just kind of the name of the game, you know. Um, like, for example, Idaho. I don't always buy a hunting license in Idaho, but if, if I do buy one, I'll typically I'll buy, like, a over-the-counter elk hunting tag. Mm-hmm. And then I think, you know what? I've already got the hunting license. I might as well also apply in the draw for a controlled tag. And if I draw a better tag, at that point, they give me the option to, to turn one or the other in. So I can turn in that over-the-counter tag that I bought. I can keep the controlled tag, which is the good tag, and I can go hunting. So there's some little, Hmm. I mean, there's all these like little hidden gems, you know. It's a great way to justify that. Yeah, yeah. Same thing like in Arizona. When people, you're you're already applying, you might as well go on that December, January over the counter deer deer hunt hunt for mule deer or coos deer. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're already buying it. Might as well make one maybe trip. There's nothing else to do in the winter anyway. That's. Yeah, and that's a fun. That's a fun hunt. That'd be a fun hunt for your bow for the bow hunters out there. Mm -hmm. Like, man, that's a a riot. That late season over the counter deer hunt in Arizona is awesome. That's it's definitely cool. gaining some steam lately. Oh, okay. for sure. More guys are onto that one. Yeah. For sure. Well, then you talk in my home state of Washington, you know, as much as I dearly love the landscape, that, <laughs> that's a tricky one yeah. for applying. Yeah. Washington's tough for a non resident. Yeah. And they make it hard. Uh, and we'll actually be rolling out Washington on our insider platform here within the next month or two. Hmm. And and kind of break it apart and, and help people make sense of what's worth applying for and what isn't. I Why mean, would anyone want to deal with all that rain? <laughs> yeah, that's a glorious place, Jim. <laughs> but so I mean, unless something's changed, to my knowledge, if you wanted to to apply, let's say for a limited entry elk hunt, like you don't only own the license, you I mean, you've bought you own an elk tag, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's expensive to apply. I, I typically tell people not to apply yeah. in in Washington for for elk and deer. Um, you know, for sheep or goat. Maybe you're still into it. 110 bucks. It's expensive to apply there, right? Um, and if you just want ha- to to have a chance, and and those permits come out of the same pool, resident, non-resident. So you know, it's it's kind of worth it. But again, it's like buying a 110 dollar raffle ticket. You know, mm. but I, I typically tell people to unless you've just got the uh, the expendable income. Just don't worry about Washington. <laughs> yeah, sorry, no offense. No, no man, no, that's, no, just, that's actually just good what advice. It is. Just yeah. all together, just leave Washington alone. For <laughs> about it. It's basically just, you know. I just helped you, actually. You might as well just, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. As a resident. Just basically assume there's 49 states in that. No, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. <laughs> there's a lot of great people out of Washington, <laughs> aside mm. from the Seahawks. But <laughs> awesome, guys. Yeah, dude. I mean, well, I, I feel like, too, the, the funny thing is that you jump in a podcast like this. We've talked about already just a number of different little tips and tricks and things. Yeah. But, like, 10 years ago, this podcast could have been just, like, five hours long. And we would have been telling, you know, it could have gotten, like, all this crazy stuff. And now it's just, like, go to the app. It's all that you're Get this insider thing. And then, yeah, just, just yeah, figure I mean, that's, yeah. it's nuts. Mm-hmm. It's, like, a lot of it's figured out. A lot got, of it is. You just got to go and do it. Just tap in. Yep, we've made we've made it as easy as we possibly can for people. It's always it's all there. Everything that you need, above and beyond that. I mean, we're more than welcome to. Uh, you're more than welcome to hit us up uh, in an email or give me a call, and, and I'm you know more than happy to to talk to you and and kind of help you through your strategy or yeah. give you a tip or, or a trick to help you. Uh, apply and get a tag. I mean, ultimately, like you talk about Go Hunt when you first started, like what is Go Hunt, right? Uh, I think if you were to talk to Lorenzo, who's the owner, um, ultimately, like he just wants to help people get in the field. Like he was looking for more opportunity himself, didn't know how to get it. Um, and that's the the big picture. Like we just want more people to, to experience that. It's such, I mean, such an awesome experience to like hunt the West, right? So yeah, we just want to cool. help people uh, get out there and do it. 
Yeah. I feel like, yeah, people who were born west of the Mississippi weren't born with, like, you know, they didn't give them on their birth certificate also, like, a secret sheet as to how to apply for Western Hunts. It's just, <laughs> right. you know, I don't know, they're just out there, and they're probably using apps like this. And yeah. They just figured it out. So if you're east of the Mississippi, get Go Hunt, get Insider. Break that learning curve. Oh, Break, heck yeah. Get rid of that fear. It's not yeah. as hard as you think it is. Yeah. yeah. Once you do it, you're going to be hooked. Mark, I feel like that was just a universal last call. I agree. All around the board. Get it. Solid. Go hunting. Get it. Like the name like the name implies. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. go. Yeah, well, thanks for having us. That yeah. was fun. Thank you guys really for coming time. out. Really appreciate it. And uh like these guys were saying too, if you have any questions about the Western Tag draw system and all that stuff, give them a call. Like, you know, head head to the app, but give them a call, shoot them an email, whatever, contact these guys and they're they're super helpful with all that. So uh yeah, also hit us up if you have any other questions for us. Not that uh we're the pros, but we might be able well, I can't mark mine. We might not, but we know the pros. <laughs> we know them. We know them. All right. Well, with that, we'll end it on, on the classic bye. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye. All right. That'll wrap it up for this episode of the Vortex Nation podcast. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Hit that subscribe button so you can always stay up to date on the latest happenings over here at the Vortex Nation podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at Vortex Nation podcast. Again, everybody, thanks, and happy hunting and shooting. We appreciate it. Have a good one.